My family's weary of me marrying Ed. Are you excited? Yeah, sort of. Making her happy. I'm going to drink to that because I'm shocked that this wedding's actually happening. <laughs> so are we. <laughs> It's time to watch more of the train wreck that is Big Ed and Liz's journey of love on 90 Day Fiance. And in today's episode, Liz shops for a wedding dress while her family completely trashes Ed and pretty much says that they don't think that she should marry him. Which obviously is obvious, but make sure you watch till the very end because this video is just full of awkwardness and uh, Liz is becoming a bigger L than I could ever imagine her becoming. So make sure you drop a like if you enjoyed these videos and without any further ado, let's get right on into it, shall we? Are you getting up early? I know. I'm watching my husband. Can I have a hug? So we get a very scripted, awkward vibe of a family scene here opening up in this episode. Again, Liz's daughter is staying with them for the summer, so Ed is kind of becoming like a stepfather to her. Granted, they've had a more extensive relationship than we've seen off camera, so maybe he actually is, you know, cool around her, but everything just still seems so awkward. Like, he really had to force that hug out of her, and even then she was like, uh, you're kind of weird. Get away from me. You're not my dad type vibes. You know what I mean? But anyways, let's keep going. Nothing too bad so far. The wedding is less than eight weeks away, so it is very stressful. Today, my mom and my grandmother are coming into town to celebrate 4th of July with us. So yeah, they got their wedding in two months, and just as Big Ed said in the last episode, he's experiencing quite a bit of stress, and apparently all the times they fought was because he was stressed out. I think it's for many other things, you know, his insecurity, her insecurities, just the fact that they are two people that should not be in a relationship from the get-go. Obviously, there's gonna be friction because of that, but I'm half expecting him to just act like a total jerk 24-7 this season, because that's what they're kind of setting it up to be. I love having Riley around, and she loves to bake, but I know I'm going to have to mop the floor when we're done. I just can feel it. <laughs> and even something as small as him waking up late while they are making breakfast pizza, whatever that is, he just joins this scene and becomes a nuisance to her and her daughter, like literally just bullying them about how much flour they're spilling everywhere. And she brings up the fact that he cooks homemade pasta all the time and gets flour everywhere. Of course, it's okay when he does it, but we all know Big Ed is one of those, you know, classic boomer mentality type people, rules for me, but not for thee. So he can make a mess in his own house because he pays for it, but a child cooking a fun breakfast with their mom and stepdad, no, that's not going to fly. You can't get any flour anywhere where we need to keep it clean like it's a Chipotle and you're, you know, the assistant manager trying to micromanage everybody. Like, how about you have fun for five seconds, Big Ed? Is it really that hard? I know, but you guys are such, so messy. Baby, it's just a little here, bit move, right move, here. Just move. Have you not seen yourself cook pasta? It's a little bit of flour. I don't make this big of a mess. Babe, there was no mess. And you can hear how Liz pretty much just has to talk to him as if he's a child. I don't know if this is attractive for her to have that sort of dynamic in their relationship where she has to pretty much be, you know, the caregiver and parent to this guy at the same time. But um, yeah, that would just annoy the hell out of me. And I would not want to feel like I'm infantilizing my partner as if they can't take criticisms. You know, when she talks to him in any sort of negative light, she has to really make sure she walks on eggshells because he's such a whiny baby that he will find a way to turn it back around on her if he's the one that's, you know, doing something in the wrong and needs to have a talking to. No, instead, he always flips it on Liz and says that she's the bad one. So you could tell she's just acting out of, you know, past experience here and really trying to skirt around the issue of him kind of being a jerk and controlling in this breakfast scene. I'm not doing this. If you can't have fun, just go. Look at all this right here, babe. This whole mess right here is you because you don't know how to pick up yourself after pasta. Are you going to smile? And just as I feared, granted, this is a light fight. It's really not over anything serious, but still it's tension. And you can see this girl is like not having a good time as the adults around her are fighting. So this was the exact sort of thing I wanted to avoid. And it's just sad that we are literally in episode two and it's already happening, bro. Like Big Ed just cannot be trusted to have a family and run that smoothly. He is too selfish, too self-centered, and too egotistical to let anybody else around him feel like they're equals. Are you going to smile? Are you going to clean your mask? Or let this ruin your day? Will you stop ruining it? Being a little brat. Clean your mask or go You're back to bed. I'm going to be a little brat. And he talks to her as if she's his daughter, too. Like, the dynamic between these two is so disgusting on so many levels, bro. He's just so manipulative in the way that he talks, and I want Liz to really consider this. She just said she's eight weeks away from her wedding. This is what you're committing to for the rest of your life, okay? Think of how much longer the rest of your life is going to hopefully be. It, just every single day, it's going to be filled with random bullshit and fights like this. If you don't think that's a nightmare and a walking, like, hell-on-earth type situation, I don't know what's wrong with you, because this sounds like the opposite of what I'd want to be living and experiencing day in and day out for the rest of my life. What do you guys talk to me about it and we can clean it up everything after we're done? That's a great idea. 
And then, much like uh, that classic, you know, commercial where the girl decides, why not both on the taco shells? Liz's daughter comes in here with a wild idea. Why don't we just make the damn breakfast pizza, have a good time, stop fighting like little babies, and then we can all collectively clean it up afterwards. To which both the adults say, hey, wait, that was a great idea. Maybe we did need to fight over this. Like, seriously, the one that's about, like, a fifth of Big Ed's age and a third of Liz's age was the only one that could come up with this super simple conclusion. I'm convinced both of these people just never stopped maturing maturing mentally past the age of like nine because they are seriously way too idiotic to be fully grown adults. Going to couples therapy in Florida definitely gave us a good roadmap. Roadmap? What? What? Did we watch separate things? Did you live something separate than what was filmed on that show? Because Liz, we watched a whole damn season of you and Big Ed getting supposed couples therapy and all we saw was again Big Ed regressed to being a circus performer in the 1600s or some and you bulge your eyes out and talk to your mom about how much you wanted to break up with him. I'm pretty sure that was like the third night before they were supposed to leave this, quote, therapy session. There was no roadmap laid out. There was nothing done in order to better their relationship. And I hate that they're acting as if, you know, them going to the Keys and like having this fake BS therapy did anything for them other than just, you know, sensationalize their relationship more. Like nothing has been done in this girl. It's absolutely delulu to think otherwise because yeah, your man has not made any changes, nor have you. You both have actually regressed as people as you both continue down this hellish road that is this relationship. We still have issues. We are definitely working on how we can communicate and fight through those issues, but also the stress of the wedding's coming. And we hear the same tired old BS from Liz that we've been hearing for, you know, the four years they've been together at this point. We're really trying, we're making steps towards us having better communication. I seem to be trying a lot harder than Ed is, but, it, you know, at least he's seeing that I'm trying. So that's really the important part. Like, Liz, I'm sick of you giving us these spiels. Nothing has been changing. But anyways, that's enough of this scene. Now we're fast forwarding to Liz and her family. She actually had her mom and her grandma drive, you know, 16 hours down to see her here. And she's going to be picking out some wedding dresses as we get some uh, interesting lore about what her family thinks of Big Ed. It's not going to really be a shocker to any of us as we all feel the same way, but it's still funny to see. I am getting married in a barn, so that's, yes. I'm going to take all the ladies wedding dress shopping, and I am just so excited to be Mrs. Big Ed. <laughs> oh, God. I'm sorry. <coughs> oh, I really just almost threw up at hearing the term Mrs. Big Ed. That is literally like, that is something they'd crown you if you actually were in hell and you were like the worst person to go to hell that year, you'd probably be crowned Mrs. Big Ed. Like that is just the worst title you can have, okay? Why would you proudly exclaim that you are ready to become that, Liz? This is literally where your life is at at this point. Consider that. I'm a very, very, very stingy shopper. <laughs> So I just want to try things on, get some ideas. Well, let's hope you're a stingy shopper, because if you guys remember from last episode, Big Ed has a secret he's keeping from Liz. They are pretty underwater financially as they've made this move, living off of their savings over here in Arkansas. So yeah, you might want to cheap out on the dress, Liz, because this might be a little bit over Big Ed's budget if it's, you know, any sizable amount of money. My mom is not a big fan of Ed, especially since the engagement party. I mean, she doesn't like the way Ed's treated me in the past, so... I mean, do you blame her, though? She's your mom, and she's looking out for her daughter, uh, who she's seen completely just been destroyed by this guy. You've been crying, you've been fighting with him for the three or four years that she's seen you, you know, together with him, and pretty much it's been 99% sadness, 1% fake happiness. Like, even the happy parts don't seem all that real, and they seem manufactured and forced at your expense. So I really get why her mom doesn't really f*** with Ed, it seems like. I need my family to be able to see what I see in Ed, why he does make me happy. I'm gonna go try those on. <laughs> okay. okay. And I love this statement for her here. I need my family to see what I see in Ed, AKA, I need to put on a show so that my family can lie to themselves about what Big Ed is not, just in the same way that I have been doing for all these years, so everybody else can share in the delusion that I am marrying a good guy who is handsome and a good person overall and looking out for my best interests and not just some sleazy weird dude who is simply going after me because I'm younger than him and attractive. And it's just such a crazy thing. Like this woman, she really jumps through so many mental hoops in order to arrive to the conclusion that she truly does love this guy and it's like you really shouldn't need that much convincing are you excited yeah sort of making her happy 
I know. So she's in there trying her first dress, and the mom and the grandma are talking, and uh, they're not very convincing in terms of their happiness when it comes to this whole wedding and marriage uh, situation that Liz and Big Ed are in. The grandma's literally like, well, it's, it's making her happy, which is kind of old person speak for, I think she's a dumbass, and she's going to really regret this, but I can't live her life for her now that she's an adult, so I'll just have to be there during the fallout when she eventually divorces this guy and is on to divorce number three at the ripe age of 32 years old, and she comes crying on my shoulders, then I'll step in as a grandma, but for now, it's making her, quote, happy, so we'll let her do it. No matter how loud or how low, as long as they communicate. I'm still on the fence. I am still on the fence. Yeah, I'm with the mom here. In fact, I'm not on the fence. I am fervently against this marriage happening. But, you know, as somebody who's trying to love and support her daughter, I can see why she's trying, trying her best in order to see this in a good light. But yeah, what is the family supposed to believe after they've seen all this stuff on TV and they know more things that have happened behind the scenes that I'm sure are even worse than any of the stuff we've seen on TV? And that was bad enough for all of us to make a firm conclusion that these two are not meant to be together. And like they give us a flashback of the last season where they were at that quote therapy, you know, camp or retreat, whatever it was in Florida. Remember, she actually had a phone call with her mom on like the second to last day after their huge fight after Angela blew up at her and Big Ed didn't defend her and then got mad at her for, I don't know, getting in trouble with Angela. It was so confusing, but she basically had this long phone call where she was like, I need to break up with that. I can't handle it anymore. And the mom was like, yes, break up with him. You do not need to be wasting your time with this guy. That was literally like a couple months months ago as of the time they were filming this so I can see why the wounds are still fresh in her mom's mind. I'm gonna drink to that because I'm shocked that this wedding's actually happening. <laughs> so are we. <laughs> Yeah, we're all shocked. <laughs> I think that's the best word for it is honestly shocked. I guess disgusted might be the second most applicable word here for me and for all of you when it comes to this marriage. But yeah, this was the most least enthusiastic cheers we've ever seen. I will say this first dress that Liz is trying on looks absolutely magnificent. Hopefully it's not out of Big Ed's budget in case she likes it, but it's nice that she at least gets this time with her mother and grandma, which I'm sure she's going to really look back on this fondly, at least as time spent with her grandma. You know what I mean? I would like to talk to Ed before the wedding day just so that the uncomfortableness that's between us goes away so here's a crazy part. The mom brings up the fact that she wants to have a one-on-one -on -one with Big Ed and really sit down and talk to him so that they can iron out this awkwardness before she officially marries him, which I think is a completely plausible thing to do. You want to have this worked out because if the family can't support you being married, that's going to bring a lot more tension that they just simply can't handle. And what does Liz say in response to this? I want you to imagine the most sad way, like the most indoctrinated way to respond to this. That's how Liz responds but I don't want to go backwards. I just want to move forward because... I know. So if we can clear the air so that he can just relax a little bit. Liz, talking about stuff when it's, you know, over everybody's heads and in the back of their minds, that is moving forward. She's like, I don't want to move backwards. I don't want to live in the past, even though, you know, Ed still truly hasn't really shown that he's changed his character and he hasn't fully apologized to me in many, many different situations where he should have apologized. I don't want to, you know, really focus on that. I just want to be in the happy times of the future and the now. <laughs> like, shut the f up, please. You are literally so immature when it comes to handling this relationship and your mom is totally valid in wanting to have this conversation so i think it's honestly incredibly weak of liz to say this to her mom and to react this way i think it shows just how scared she is of showing that big ed is not as good of a guy as he claims and having him you know be held accountable for his actions that makes her very uncomfortable and that is a direct result of his manipulation and the way that he has been getting into her head all these years i don't want you to be like too straightforward because i give that to him enough put this down so we don't spill that she literally starts crying and going on about this spiel about how she doesn't want, she basically is saying, I don't want you to hold Big Ed accountable for his actions because the whole world already does that and I do it enough and I don't want him to be sad about the stuff that he deserves to be sad about anymore. <sighs> like this is the most pathetic ever. And the fact that it's juxtaposed and her sitting in this beautiful wedding dress is just such funny TV to me. Like you are looking like such a punk right now, Liz. Stand up for yourself. Be comfortable with your family standing up for you if you can't and grow a free freaking backbone, okay? This man has completely derailed your life and you're about to enter marriage number three. Let me, let me keep repeating that. This is like the marriage number where you really can't mess up because if you're finding out you're on marriage number four, that is like the most red of red flags. Already it's crazy you're on number three, so I really need you to get this right, okay? Just let your damn mom talk to Big Ed. <laughs> I just, I'm hard enough on him enough and so is everybody else. But I just, I don't want you to be hard on him. He knows he's given you a reason to be upset. I just, 
And the mom is even trying to talk to Liz in such a, you know, nice motherly way, showing that she doesn't really hold a resentment against Big Ed. She just wants to get this stuff laid out in the open so they can talk about it and move past it, which is just apparently the most terrifying thing ever to Liz, and I don't get why. So then finally, after that crying session, Liz tries on a second dress, which she loves. It's this long emotional thing where she's like, oh, I love it, but it's, it's $900, to which her daughter brings out the worst comment you could ever make when you're in a sales environment. Just get it. Who cares about the money? Like, she's the type of person you do not want to bring with you if you're trying to buy a car because they are going to be on the dealership side trying to get you to make this impulse purchase when it's like, no, do not buy this dress. But yeah, I think she ends up spending a rack on it. So that's another way that Big Ed is getting further into debt. And that does wrap up today's video. I want to know what you guys think this confrontation next episode is going to be like. Do you think there's going to be shouting involved? I think Big Ed is going to get entirely too defensive and ruin things for himself even more than he already has in the past. So if you enjoyed this one, make sure you drop a like, leave a comment of your thoughts, and as always, comment Grip Squad for life. If you made it all the way to the end, I'll catch you guys in the next video, and until next time, peace out.